Hi, so Enzo has asked me to produce a video on uh, subwoofer placement in rooms and why planning of this is really important. So here we are in a demonstration room and uh, also lab, I guess, in uh, Cinema 2 at Home Theatre Engineering in Perth. <coughs> and what I've done is I've put a subwoofer in the corner and I've got a signal generator that I'm using here and we're going to listen to some tones. But before we get started, I really want to address this whole subwoofer thing. Um, <coughs> I'm going to produce some other videos on this, but I'm going to make a couple of initial statements. First of all, statement number one. This is pretty bold. There is no such thing as bass traps. Now, having said that, that's not true. But the reason I say that is this. Um, to all intents and purposes, for most of what we do, um, it would be fair to say that bass traps are not a usable solution at the uh, mid to low end of the scale. The other thing is the things that you see on the internet normally as bass traps aren't bass traps at all. Okay, so. Just understand that too. The bass traps that do exist are specialized. They need the room to be analyzed. You need the problem to be determined. You need the bass trap generally to be tuned and designed to a certain frequency. It's a very specific art and there are some experts out there who are very, very good at it. People like acoustic fields, right? Um, so if you are looking for that sort of thing, it's people like that that you want to reach out to. Why don't we use them? Well, generally they're big. Generally, they're expensive and uh, they take a lot of time and effort. So in terms of cost uh, and, and our time and your time, it gets to be sort of unrealistic. Now, things that are not bass traps. The foam that you see on the walls, that's not bass traps. The foam that you see in corners, they're not bass traps. We'll address that uh, in a later video. Okay, so what do you do? Well, first of all, we have to work out what the problem is in a room. And you can't do that without measuring. It's a bit like turning up to the doctors and saying, I want the treatment. And the first thing he's going to ask you, well, what's the problem? And the problem that we have is that most people working in home theatres never work out what the problem is in the first place. Just putting something on the walls, clapping your hands and hearing a difference doesn't mean it's a good solution. All right. That's a fairly sort of broad and sweeping statement. I want to produce a video on acoustic treatment in general, but today it's all about subwoofers. So I'm going to generate a tone in this room. Now what I've got here, I don't know if you can see it in the corner. Okay, so we've got a subwoofer sitting in the corner. It's connected via a cable over here, which comes all the way up to my signal generator here. All right, what we're gonna do is we're gonna generate a tone I'll just turn this around. So that's in the corner. Let's get a tone going. All right, now hopefully this is gonna work. It's very different to our ears as we hear in a recording, because I tried this before. I'm just gonna go and stand over here. Oh, hang on. Now this is all coming from one subwoofer which is so it's kind of freaky. All right, so here, uh, I'm not sure what you're hearing on the recording. I'm hoping I don't have to simulate it. I'm now gonna move across the room. Right, died it down a little bit there, for me anyway. Just, I'm just rocking backwards and forwards. All right, that's all I'm doing. Now I'm gonna move sideways in the room. Now I'm at the main listening position and the seat's actually shaking, right? And then I'm gonna move into, oh, I'm just standing behind the second seat in the room. Okay, and I'm walking forward in the room. So I'm literally walking around the room. Oh, hang on, there we go. So that's a width mode, right? So that's anyone sitting in this row along the entire length of the room is getting reduced bass. Anyone sitting here is getting loud bass. 
and then so I'm moving in and out of a matrix of nodes and peaks effectively of the subwoofer. So there's almost, I'm not sure what you're hearing, all right? So there's almost nothing here. All right, so this is another length mode because I can walk sideways through the room. So one length mode here. That was a length node, this is a mode. Very loud here, crazy loud here. And there'll probably be another one. Oop, tripped over a seat. Here. Right, so here. That's quiet. And I'm sure if I went backwards and forwards, I could adjust that. So, that's one subwoofer playing in a room, completely uneven. Right. I'm just doing a quick circuit around the room and hopefully what you're hearing Right, now I've got to kill that before I go insane. Hang on a sec. Whew. All right, so that's the importance of having a more than one subwoofer or at least having a subwoofer located in a position that gives you an even frequency response. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to have a look at uh, this is a room simulation and in this room simulation uh, we can see that we've got one subwoofer okay and look at the room response there and then we've got two subwoofers and we can have a look at the response there and we've got three subwoofers and the response there and four subwoofers and the response there. Now, none of them are perfectly flat, all right, because the room will always exert an influence. But what we can do is we can get a response that gives us a high consistent mean level with a few peaks that we can knock out, but no nulls. Right? And then that means that we can actually go and get even sound in each and every seat. This is a part of the reason that uh, doing room design planning is so critical. Now, I will say this, don't rely on REW Room Simulator for your room. It's a guide. The reason being, it's not uh, a supercomputer that you're using with REW and it doesn't have the data to give you a super accurate result. It will give you a guide. If, you're, if you have a lot of windows, if you've got soft walls, if you've got curtains and dividers separating other rooms, then the length of the room that you put in, the length of the room that you might measure, whether it's seven by five meters uh, or whatever, may not be the acoustic length of the room. The only way that you can really tell that is by generating a tone with a subwoofer and then having a look at the response of that room. Now, what I'm gonna do here is hopefully, let's see, just bear with me. This is my iPad. I'm using it as a signal generator, but I'm also using it to capture the base response of this um, sub in the room. So I'll post that here so that you can see it. As you can see, there's a lot of peaks and dips being generated by that subwoofer, which, by the way, I now need to turn off because, again, it will drive me insane. So if you are planning on designing a room, then you need to take a really good look at uh, how you are going to manage the base in individual seats. You know, I like to say that I've uh, probably saved more marriages than any counsellor because the fact of the matter is you've got uh, uh, some, uh, you know, one person and their partner sitting in a cinema and one saying, it's too loud or boomy, turn it down. And the other one's saying, I can't hear it, turn it up. And the reason is one is sitting in a node, one is sitting in a null um, or a mode. And that's the challenge. Um, the room hasn't been set up properly. Plus, it's not just that. It's not just getting even sound in every seat. It's actually missing sounds completely. If you have one subwoofer in a room, or maybe even two, or even four set up incorrectly, you're actually missing frequencies. So if you look at this chart, you can see that there are certain frequencies here that are missing. 40 hertz and, hang on a sec, let's have a look. Uh, 70 hertz, um, and the thing rolls off incredibly at 27 hertz. So uh, anything below 27 hertz is going to start to vanish. Anything at 40 hertz doesn't exist. Anything at, uh, what did I say? 
um, 70 hertz roughly <coughs> isn't going to be heard. So, you know, this takes you into an even deeper conversation, and that is people who try to set rooms up using music. If you set a room up and you set up your bass, or, or in fact any speakers just using music, then it's going to be biased towards that particular track. So, for example, if that track um, has a drum in it at a certain frequency or a cello predominantly playing certain notes, then you might adjust it so you can hear those or maybe turn it down if they're too dominant. The problem is when you play your next track, you haven't accounted for the frequencies that you haven't been listening to. All right, so you need to make sure that each and every frequency is getting to your ears with equal sound pressure levels so that you then have very smooth sound throughout your room. We put a lot of effort into room design. We work really, really hard to try and make sure the experience you have sitting in a room is consistent in each and every seat. And it's not just with the subwoofers, it's with every feature. But I hope that this has sort of shown you what happens if you just have one subwoofer in a room or if the subwoofers are not tuned properly and then you know perhaps what you can do about it. So if you are baffled about multi-sub configurations and you want help give us a call we're always here to assist and thank you once again. Now listen please 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 you know you see YouTubers all over the place begging and scraping on these for subscriptions um, and likes and follows. The, the problem is without it yeah, our channel can't grow. The other thing is, please, if you're looking for some uh, inside information, uh, look at becoming a Patreon. Uh, we have some information coming up and uh, we are going to get back to our uh, uh, regular um, video conferences for all Patreon members. All right, no worries and thank you very much. We'll see you again soon.